Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here in Old World Blues Trouble in Paradise at the beginning of a new campaign. <sighs> it always feels good to say, there has been an update for one of my favorite mods. Anyways, as you can tell from the thumbnail, and probably as from the title, we're playing as a certain select nation, the White Legs. Now they have the options of going with a new god for Uta, Mormon slaves, or even strong arms for the white legs. But we're savages. Savages, oh well. So, we shall play them now. This is the very first campaign where we're going to play in Trouble in Paradise, the update for it. B that being said, I want to go with historical AI because I don't know exactly just yet how things will play off. Sure, we know. The NCR will kill off Kaiser's Legion, or they'll kill each other off somehow, some way. But, I don't know how Nevada's going to turn out. Really more of, of Utah. Because High Chapel's in the north instead of down here now. Um, just, I want to see what happens. And because of that, custom game rules, I have no mods on. Besides Old World Blues, State Transfer Tool Mod, Player Led Peace Conferences, and Colored Buttons, which should work. But, other than that, I want to just keep everything plain and simple. If you're watching this like in May or like in December, forgive me. I am, I just don't know what's going on in the current moment and we have the new caps system which is really cool uh yeah let's just get, get started everything's going to be pretty normal very historical but with the white legs Ooh, the lord's anointed now the big thing i know about this update is that they have they've done a lot for a lot of religious things high chapel lord's anointed does lone tree even have their own focus tree that'd be cool if they did they kind of do this is kind of the maybe generic religious focus tree maybe to a degree a little bit a little bit maybe just because uh, you see this in other places like high chapel they have well they kind of have something similar to this so it's not exactly not exactly but it's regardless it's still really cool anyways white legs death of the old world this is the second world born from the ashes of the father's punishment now we are tribal i haven't played as a tribal nation at the time of this recording anytime soon and there's a lot of buffs and little stuff for this technology stuff but anyways we do have a penalty to research we are tribal but let's see let's choose land doctrine i'm gonna go with asymmetrical warfare because we're raider nations but i do want to note that if we go down a certain way with this pretty awesome focus tree that we could in time probably become become civilized unlocks a tooltip to gain access to some of the benefits of a civilized society if we become the chief of utah Ooh, but that'll be fun. So, I still want to do some industry, just a little bit. Let's get some work as needed, and then we will go with research speed with Ohm's Law. Now, we have 13 divisions, and we'll put them under our leader. Salt upon wounds, and with this update, we have a special. S-P-E-C-I-A-L. Now, it's replaced the standard Hoi Force, uh, you know, system of, you know, just having stuff of upgrades but now they've included their own system which is really amazing they even have night person cult of personality uh beloved leader just awesome now we don't have that many factories we have 11 in total we have four maybe three or four building civilian workshops probably isn't the most ideal thing but who cares military factories we need, we have pipe guns i'm going to keep pipe guns on for now just because we're already making them in time though i will want melee weaponry absolutely go for the melee weaponry i need some dynamite too i need a lot of dynamite we don't have a lot of manpower though that's kind of concerning that's going to be very concerning for me uh seven out of seven pretty nice we want some support equipment eventually that'd be good and division training no yes not gonna use that well we really only have one division and it's 14 combat with not bad but they do have demo companies on them so could be worse train two at a time and yes you see this negative modifier we have cost I am playing... Oh, we can't really see it now. God dang it. The stupid state transfer tool. I wish I could move that around. But if I hover over hover over this... Um, we have slaves. Well, technically we don't have slaves right now. We have zero. We gain one slave a month. And we have caps. We have bottle caps as money. Money. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. And I don't know this that well. I really don't at the current moment. But I believe our main goal at the moment is to really take out these... Who is this? The Timekeepers. Now, I might take them out early on. I might not. We'll see what happens. But, with this new update, 
we have a capped economy. We get money every three months. And it looks like I'll get about 24, almost 25 caps. And then we've got some other things we could do. So, the tales of our fathers. The shamans tell of the great cities of the east and west. And of a shining city on the lake. But when the heavens broke, many of our forefathers died. When the sun hid in shame. The old magics went away. Our forefathers fell back upon the oldest profession. War. Look at that image. That's really cool. Only the strong survive. We get more surrender limit. But 10% more attack, which is awesome. Only the cunning survive. So we get more division speed. Less division training time. And more planning speed. I like the attack. Give me that attack. We're going to be an attacky nation. Next up, we have monsters among us. After the death of the great war chieftain, the super mutants poured through Utah to the endless plains. Some of them left an influence on our culture. And death, deed to the chieftain. Salt upon the wound is willing to show his prowess through epic deeds in war, in the hunt, and in judicial decisions. And I'm also going to disable this just because it's the same every time. Procurement of things. They also updated the scavenging program as well, which is really cool. Uh, monsters among us. So, over 100 years ago, the super mutants marched through Utah. They were, not, they were great warriors, and could perform great feats of strength. While New Canaan was ravaged by the beasts, the White Legs became famous for how they handled them. In epic battles, our warriors met their muscles with blades, with smoke and poison, with fire and blood. And the fate of the survivors still echoes through the waste. Are they valued members of our tribe, or some of them are still slaves for our band? Now, if we do this, take a look at this. Look at the ministers. This is insane what we have. Military staff, military policies. Now we have e economic policies, cultural policies production policies this is much a little bit more in depth than what was in old world blues before so right now we could change our mutant recruitment training law right now we currently have uh no mutants which gives us two percent stability which isn't bad that isn't bad we could have super mutant recruitment which gives us less attrition better slightly better recovery rate we lose some stability but we get more war support and reinforce rate girl recruitment which isn't bad actually either uh, recruit all mutants, which hurts our out of supply and stability, but honestly, some of them are still slaves. We do get more construction speed, which is nice. Production cap and research speed. I'm going to need the super mutants for a reason. Ah, super mutant auxiliaries. Nice. Ah, super mutants. Thank you for joining us here. Good. And the winds have changed. The sky burned almost 200 years ago, but much has changed since then. Now we must change as well. And now we have super mutants, and these divisions, these are six in combat with, just a little bit larger than our infantry. But honestly, they're not that much better or worse. So, on the right is the super mutants, and on the left is our normal infantry. Super mutants without demo companies already have more soft attack, more hard attack, more defense, more breakthrough. Now, they do have eight, they have one more, um... Battalion, but they don't have the demo company, which make, can make a difference. Uh, let's see, anything else? They have oh, roughly double the HP. A little, just a little bit less organization, same recovery rate, and they take just a little bit more su uh, supply. Really, using super mutants as these guys sounds like an extremely good idea. And actually, I think they use the same amount of manpower. They use 200 while everyone else uses 190. Mm, whatever. So, when's it change? Within the last generation, our people have seen changes that cause some unease. Words of a god in the deserts to the south, who has united the tribes of Arizona. Traders from the west buying our beaver pelts and gecko skins. The 80s are stirring in their camps. To the north, the Mormons of New Canaan have sent missionaries to preach of their god. Salt upon wounds. Seize these changes with unease and worry. There are many, many threats to his people. To him, the only hope is to ride the change instead of being trampled underfoot. Do we choose at least the traders bring caps and guns? Or some of the missionaries have much to teach us? Missionaries? Why would we want to go with missionaries? Guns and guns and caps sound like the correct thing to do. Now, we could choose several focuses here. I don't understand this too much just because these seem kind of exclusionary to each other. For example, on the right, this is more of the we're going to stay with by ourselves path. Like, we're independent. Uh, strong arms for the white legs, more autocracy, stability, and boost the favor of our gods. Sources of water is actually pretty good to do. Get more manpower and purification stations. Mormon slaves, we get stability and more democracy. Scavenge the ruins, we get a civilian workshop. But a new god for Utah, we get, become more oligarchic. Get more caps. Not bad. If we go down this path, we get more division equipment, infantry equipment. 
Uh, unlocks the ability to launch slave raiding border wars to satisfy the markets of the wastes, which increases our perceived threat from New Canaan. Dinar, you know what? I like stability a lot because that could give you more, you know, political power, factory output, dockyard output. This stuff is not bad. Um, oh, research speed—that's not bad. I like this as well because you get less consumer goods. I like all the stability I can get at the same time, so... Uh, this doesn't give you stability, though. Let's do Mormon slaves first. Just because if we do democracy first, that means that'll be weakened overall once we choose that. So let's go with Mormon slaves. Some of our slaves subscribe to the Mormon faith. How foolish to worship a dead god in this dead world. And yet our women find their words to be quite pleasing. And if you give me one second here, my cat is meowing outside my room crazily. All right, my apologies. Let's see. And we have 57 more days. That's okay. We have strong legs, more attack, more surrender limit, but we're savages. Salt upon wounds. Oh, I love his face. Oh, God, we need more manpower. We only have 55,000. We're in Veterans Pathfinders. This is the kind of the big thing about uh, things. Ooh, he falls ill by doing nothing. Okay. So this is conscription law. We can have veteran pathfinders, which helps with monthly population, research speed, construction speed. If we go to born warriors, we get less population for a huge boost to construction speed, research stuff, organization, monthly, po monthly population. But we want need more manpower, like from 7% to 10%. We lose monthly population. We get a tiny bit of recruitable population factor. We get less construction speed and less research speed, which sounds like that actually hurts us quite a bit. Then we can go to first sons and daughters, which we will basically conscript into our armies, which hurts us even more for more population. And then children and mothers, which... Who doesn't want to conscript children and mothers? But... Um... You see me doing this? I'm doing that because they only have one division. I have, like, 15. It's going to take a long time, and they will get more, and... Oh, they don't believe in slavery. We'll teach them right. But, uh... Hopefully, we can take them out. They don't have, well, they got a couple of military factors that we could really, really use. Economic policies, wasteland economy, is basically civilian economy. Ah, uh, white legs. Beautiful. Uh, the 80s have their own tree now. That's actually really cool. Oh, wait, who's it? Protector on Security Hub? What? What? What is that? The 80s, well-traveled roads? I would like to play as the 80s sometime. Um, I do want to say... That with this update, oh, they can do Second Nevada Road War. That sounds awesome. That there's so many different kind of Christian nations here that I won't be able to play as Crusaders like every single time. You know, peaceful converts, and we will convert people. But in other campaigns, I will definitely go with a whole Fifth Crusade, Tenth Crusade, whatever type of crusade you, we need. So it's going to be a little bit difficult trying to balance things out but we do have more things over here like the apostles my lurk tribes look how small the troll worn are they're oh, so tiny mormon slaves though good do we more do we need more scrap metal yes we actually do so the milford copper mine traders have asked to salvage an ancient hole in the ground they claim they will find copper and mining equipment in the site although we don't know what they are up to we will charge them for the right good because i actually need quite a bit more metal because that's important. Ohm's Law. Very good. Let's grab some reinforced rate. Awesome. Oh, what's this? Oh, we're going to get paid soon. Awesome. The Vision Quest. What we learn in the dark. A child is born. Um, I, I guess we could try that. Sure. It take, it'll happen in 20 days. We get about 1.13 political power a day, which I should save for the rest because there's a, a cultural advisor here. Follows today. Follows today. More daily political power, same ideology stuff, trade deal, license, purchase cost. But Great Duke, we get just a little bit more political power, which isn't worth it by itself, but we get plus 10% stability to give us even more stability. Now that's worth it. It only costs 100 political power as well, so we want to save our political power for that dude. Now I'm not sure how much it's going to cost to core stuff. I'm going to definitely have to core stuff for the White Legs, because we don't have a lot of population, but in our focus tree. Oh, whose child is this? We do eventually get... If we take out all of Utah, a warrior's people, which you get 10% recruitable population. That's nice. Elite warriors, that's nice. But whose child is this? Salt upon wounds, listen to the two women before them. 
They had lived in the same tent. Wives to a warrior who was away on campaign. Both women had borne him a daughter, but one of the daughters had died. Very well, decreed salt upon wounds. Can you not decide whose child this is? How do you not know your own daughter? Oh, chief, said one woman. It is mine. She had suckled at my breast. Oh, chief, cried the other. She is mine. I have dried her tears. And the chief said, Let us stage a contest. Yes, let us both pull upon the child, said one woman. The one who loves it shall pull the hardest. No, cried the other woman. Give her the child. I'd rather lose it than see it harmed. Well, see her harmed. And salt upon the wound realized that the second woman was a true mother, however. One of you is a mother. But even in the best case, the true mother showed little care for a grieving woman in her house. I shall raise a child as my daughter. She shall henceforth be known as dancing upon the graves of her foes. And the tribe will remember this. Thank you. I have enough money or political influence or power to get the duke. Or the great duke, which helps us with more political power, less consumer goods factories, and output for factories and dockyards. Ah, oh, I love it. Oh, population. Nice. Combining together just because I'm going to need someone who is very strong. Three. Oh, look at this guy with the fro. Bloody Anteater. He's strong. And he's lucky for even more attack. We get plus 5% attack with this guy. And he's a bruiser. We get less division speed, less planning speed, less max planning, but even 15% more attack. This guy here is all about attack. He's got rooted. Entrenchment speed, max entrenchment, pain train for more power armor attack and speed, which we will never get to. Strong back, well, at least we probably won't get power armor. Idiot savant, which actually looks pretty good if we need more equipment. Mysterious stranger for more attack. Less, 30% less defense is pretty bad. 15% more attack is pretty good, but we'll go with just 5% more. I think that's I think that's worth it. Nice. And it, probably, it only costs us 6, so let's get Great Mother Dar. So less division speed, more logistics. I like that. Ooh, camera lion. I don't like that. Less experience gain. No. Planning speed, max planning. Uh, I really don't want to use you, but... Great mother, please. Why? You're intelligent. You're agile, but... You're a druggie. <laughs> There's no other way to say it. Now, what I do like is you get a pers cult of personality, so unit leader max army size goes up, as well as group size. That's pretty good in long term. Smooth talker, nice... First... Ferocious Loyalty. Vigilant Recycler. Item supplies not bad. Junk rounds, more defense. Melee Hacker, more attack. Gun Nut. Infantry attack and defense. Robotic stuff. Nerd Rage. Light Touch. Heavyweight. Fight the Power. Sneering Imperialist. Ninja. I like the, the uh, Ninja one because you get put more recon, which sounds kind of fun. Oh, I'm not really sure what to do. How do I promote Great Mother Dar? I think as a field marshal, she... Uh, for, how much recon do our divisions get currently? Connaissance. None. So 50% more of none is still none. Just give me more attack. You know what? Just do ninja for now for more land knight attack. No. Nerd rage. No. Oh, goodness gracious. Well, these aren't mutually exclusive with ninja, so... Just give me more land on attack for now. I will be doing a lot of attacks at night anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, wrong group. Not the Sky Reavers. These guys. Now, this is why I wanted the Super Mutants, because they're pretty strong. They're pretty darn strong. Uh, how many things we need? We need a lot of guns. I want to put on a lot of demo equipment. So, when you guys get over there, train. That'll be very, very important. To train, 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 train. 1.28 political power day. Not bad. Follow up with... We ban, we ban chemical companies, or ban chems. Even though our field marshal is pretty camera line. Anyways, follow Che, follow Se. I want I want even more political power. Yes, it takes a lot of time to actually get the benefit out of using political power, but I want as much political power as possible. Awesome. Now let's stop do going down this Mormon path because we don't want to become Mormon. Probably I don't know. Let's go with strong arms for the white legs. It gives me more stability, which is nice. And we can do the God of Salt. I definitely do want to go down this way eventually, though. Oligarchy 10, 5%, 5%. You know what? Let's do a new God for Utah, and then we'll go with Strong Arms, just so that we can make Autocracy the most powerful. So, messengers have told us of the great leader in Flagstaff, a man who demands unswerving obedience and whose men serve them until death. We can learn from this great man. Perhaps we can send warriors to serve him as mercenaries. Sounds like a great idea. And, oh, 
Oh yeah, Yakuma nations now appear with the Brotherhood. Olympus Tribe, the Cause, Red Breakers, Troll Warren's looking pretty good now. Marrow Drinkers have their own focus tree, I think. Bone Dancers do. Let's get some encryption going. Yes, please. A Royal... Look, do they, they don't have their own focus tree yet, because I have no mods on here. Nope, they have a generic focus tree for now, which is fine. Which is fine. But my gosh, I need more manpower. Oh, and we're about to get paid. Now, I could purchase slaves. We currently have five. As our number of slaves increases, our industrial capacity also increased. For every 200 slaves, this perk becomes more valuable. We only have five. It's not really worth buying them for 150 caps. Can I buy infantry equipment? I'm not sure why I can't buy stuff from them. From the black market? I would love to right now, but I can't. We can only have 474. There goes Olympus Tribe. Amount 650. Oh, uh, you know what? Just for fun. I'm gonna buy a few. I'm gonna buy a few of these guys. Oh! Achievement unlocked. Wait, what? What happened to it? Whatever. Work as needed. Absolutely. Now, we might be able to eventually go civilized. In the short term, it's better to do this tracking dog stuff. And we do have bonus research bonuses for tracking dogs. Let's get some construction first. Alright, we're about to get paid. Yes, we are. Ah, oh, Sky Reavers support the ra Uh oh. Rabble. Sky Reavers forces have launched a raid to help slaves within our nation escape. This is a grave insult that will jeopardize our relations. One day soon, forces will sack Area 51 in revenge, and then we will place chains upon their leader's loved ones to teach them the price of messing with us. We get less, less stability. Government events. Dot three TT. You will now view Sky Reavers as a threat to your way of life. Fives? I just lost my slaves. Thank God we're buying more. Thank God. Ah, slavery. We could begin a scavenging program, which we can disable eventually, but does cost us caps to use and civilian factories. The reclam Reclamation Authority. Hmm. Right World Territory declared... Oh, wait, what? What? Why are you, why'd you go to war with them? Right World Territory declared war with Grabber... Oh, please hold. Hold, please. Uh, don't... I want to go to war with them. Sky Reavers? How strong are the Sky Reavers? They have four to six divisions. That's not bad. Followers of the Apocalypse rejected. Reference manual. Encryption. Good. No, guys. Hold. Push them back. Push them back. I, wa I want your territory. New leadership. Violent bastards. Five to six. Four. Oh, we have a little bit more political power. Oh, military staff. War chief. Army XP gain. Not bad. Defensive stuff. Training time. Minus 10%. More division organization. And justify war goals time. Could be better. Uh, local leaders. Legendary wastelanders. Maximum command power increase. Old outsider volunteers. Organized slavery. Economic policies. Actually. Oh, wow. We can already go to funding the army, which is like partial mobilization. Uh, early mobilization. Focusing on scavenging is like completely demobilized. Well equipped army. That sounds like it's pretty much worth it. We have a whole two factories now. No, don't take them out. I saved up my political power to take these guys out myself. Come on, man. And we're basically not even getting any uh, army XP. That's disappointing. Can I send you volunteers to help kill off these enemies? I can. Holy cow. I, this is going to be one heck of a weird move for me to do. Give me another guy. Chases Ravens. Oh, your camera... Oh, your camera line as well. I hate that. Gun nut. Infantry. Uh, oh. Rooted. You know what? You might need, you might need rooted for more entrenchment. You might just need that. You know what? I, oh, okay. Never mind. Oh, at least we got another extra general now. Asymmetrical warfare. Good. Let's grab some foraging. God dang it. That's really disappointing. If that happens, I will just go to war with Sky Reavers. God dang it. Ugh. That's annoying. 320 days. We got a new god for Uta. Ooh, land. A double bonus for land doctrine. That's pretty darn good. Infantry equipment production goes way down. That's not bad either. Raids for Flagstaff. Scavenge the Ruins. I'm going to go with uh, this one next for even more stability. Our people need no foreigners for inspiration. We are the salt of the earth, lake, and sky. Oh, they actually push him back. That's good, good, good. Ripe rolled aggression for Adaven. 
17, 34, not too many losses yet. Oh, someone got encircled. God dang it. Uh, why? Why must you do this to me? I was planning on doing this and then you, you, you hurt me. You hurt me. Why you do this to me? You guys really don't want to... I don't want to train these guys. They're really strong already. They all banished you in the Phantasmal Cartel. Yeah, it looks like we... Yeah, they're, they're, they're gonna die. We were, we were just waiting this entire time. Guys, why? Why? That's a big enemy, too. Oh, please tell me someone can break through. Yeah, they're probably not gonna win. 42, 20... Please, have a miracle or something. Break those divisions out. I don't know who's over there. Answer to clear war on the Veiled Bandits, so be it. Uh, Division-wise, you guys have... 4 to 6? You guys have 4 to 6. How are they winning? You know what? If they can hold on long enough, I can still go to war with them. It's 50 days. Can they hold up for 50 days? Honestly, probably not. If anything, if I... Oh, the followers of the apocalypse. If I can go to war with these guys... I would at least want to take the city 318. That's at least what I would want. But followers of the apocalypse, following their recent reestablishment in our neighboring rivals, a group of humanitarian pacifists who dub themselves the followers of the apocalypse have begun trickling into our lands. Their aim is seemingly noble, to provide services to those in need, ranging from medical care to agricultural advice. They care for the parts of society we prefer to forget, be them homeless or junkies, and are accepting of all that have no one left to turn to. On this front alone, and we have no qualms with them, after all, who would refuse free medical supplies? Problems only start to arise when you look closely at our neighbors, where the followers may have been established for a while. Support for any sort of war amongst the people of these nations is slipping, as they prefer to stay on their farmsteads and practice some new medicines. There's even some indication that the followers accept seditious anarchists in their ranks, who are intent on either burning our nation to the ground or seizing power themselves. We may need to keep an eye on them, therefore. If we decide to tolerate the followers remain in our, remaining in our land, once established in a nation, the followers appear very difficult to uproot. We must therefore decide swiftly, before they have a chance to settle down properly, whether or not we shall welcome these followers of the apocalypse and their strange beliefs into our land. Accepting them will undoubtedly bring benefit, but at what cost long term? Long term cost. We lose weekly, we lose weekly war support and more research speed, though, for followers spreading. Or it would be best to keep these anarchists from our lands. We lose war support, but get more research speed it's the same. Um. Oh God. You know what? I need as much help as I can get for now. This is probably a bad idea, but let them come. They'll only do good. Let's see what happens. And for the love of God, you guys better hold on for fifty days because I want to take your city over. Just give me one city, one 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 minor thing of success, please. And we're going to grab some seed selection next. The Vision Quest sounds like fun too. Jackal's so. Um, oh, I should have read that before we... Oh, wait, whoa. Follow... Escort followers caravans. Oh, I didn't realize this. Having established himself in the lands of our neighbors. Spreading throughout our lands. Pacifism, huh? I lose p manpower, but then I get 40 manpower back. Escort followers caravans. Placate the followers. I lose political power and weekly... Oh my goodness. 40... Minus 2% weekly war support. Divert the followers' supplies. I I get less stability, but uh, I get a bonus to medical tech. That's not bad. That's not bad. Ruthless drills. Begin a scavenging program. Expel the riffraff. Oh, I don't know. I really don't know right now. Often loaded with supplies and technology, making them an excellent target for any local raider gangs. But if I protect them, we can improve our relations with them. Uh, we don't have a lot of manpower, but it only really costs us 10 to do that. I don't mind trying it out, maybe? Maybe? I don't know their opinion on slaves, though, which... Oh, organization opinion. A little better. So I can't buy stuff. I can't purchase slaves either. How many slaves do I got? I got 52. That's not bad. Painted men declare war on the forgers. Alright, good luck with that. Ah, strong arms for the white legs. Let us further go with... What is this one? Less winter attrition, less heat attrition, less consumer goods factories. Slave raids. That sounds like fun. Slave raids? Ooh. Civilian and arms workshop sounds good as well. There's all these things I want to do, but I want some more manpower. Our people may not farm, but we are no fools. We know where to find water under the burning sun. And then I'm going to continue going down this path because I need to get to the clock watching so I can go to war with timekeepers. Good. Give me my money. Money, please. The followers are established. Hopefully they... Uh oh. Oh, troll warned to clear one of the rib breakers. No! No, I was waiting that entire time, you evil devils. No. 
Oh, I probably can't go to war with them. There are too many divisions. I can't go to war with anyone now. God dang it. You pieces of garbage. But what will we learn in the dark? Salt upon wounds, drank the sacred tea, and waited in a cave for the sun to set. He stepped into the chill morning light night and saw the world as bright as daylight. The visions that came to him of green men in saucers, black insects the size of men in death claws and robes. But as he walked, he headed towards a cleaning flame and saw Yao Guai on fire. Some would try to speak up with the spirit, but that was never Salt upon wounds way. The next morning, he returned to the war camp with a new trophy. A good reminder that there was always... One solution to all problems. Oh no. Oh, they got so much more manpower. Really, this is the only group that I could probably take out. Mean bastards. Road hogs. I really don't like these guys. I really don't like them. They're a raider nation. They have raider bands. Outside volunteers, no undesirables, local leaders, no mutants. Slavery outlawed. They don't have a lot of manpower. How long would it take for me to go to war with these guys? 200 days. That's so many days. But that gives me more time to raise up my army. I should have just... Went to war with them immediately. But, go ahead and pay me up. That'd be great. Ah, oh, Stupid enemies here. It gives me more time to create more divisions. And we do have the super mutants. And I do want to make sure that we have a ton of dynamite on our guys. Guys, are these you went to war with it? Hang dogs, that's okay. Um, what are the Mormons up to? Oh, who's that? Brigham Barons. Ooh. Explore Ogden Armor. He looks really sick. Oh my god. Jeremiah Rigdon. Oh, a growing threat. Oh. Hey, 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 hey man. Why are you threatening us? Puppet me? Oh no. Barbarians at the gate. The war for heaven. Canaan in flames. Canaan in glory. Decadence clutches. Oh, tax the roads, of course. It's a tax man. Purchase slaves. Well, currently we have one. 53. What else do I spend my money on? You know what? Let's let's finish this part first and see what happens before I uh, decide to get a little happy with the uh, slaves. Oh, the followers established themselves. So, having failed to work out... That we were behind efforts to take advantage of them, the followers of the Apocalypse have finally spread completely throughout our nation. They now occupy a number of forts, towers, and bases across the country, using them as medical centers and knowledge hubs to assist local populations. Sure enough, populations are expanding as babies and battle-wounded are like are nurtured back to health by these eerie doctors. Local farmers are also growing bumper crops thanks to expansive agricultural knowledge that the followers seem to possess. With these benefits come drawbacks, however, and surely but sure... Slowly but surely, the followers' ideals are seeping into out into the settlements they assist. More and more young men are laying down their arms, seeing agriculture as a more profitable enterprise. Young children are being taught basic medicine. All those who gain some knowledge from the followers remember their debts, and as a result, the influence of the followers is gradually increasing. We should be able to hold this at bay and still reap the rewards from the followers' presence, but we must be wary. That does not sound good. Maybe I... I did I choose the wrong thing? I might have chosen the wrong thing to do here. Higher... The agricultural experts. Oh, we get a building slot. That's cool. And more water. We get a civilian workshop. And more monthly population for 100 days. Petition followers technology. More research speed. And followers aid. Not bad. Uh, I do want to go to war so I can raise my conscription level. Because that's actually pretty important to do. We've already raised our well-equipped army. Followers influence. We get less political power gain. More monthly population. More stability. Less war support. And more research speed. Which isn't bad. That's actually, that's fairly balanced. I kind of like that. It's fairly balanced. Research advisor. Oh, I need, oh, wait, I need a, I need daily army XP gain. Oh, land doctrine research time or asymmetrical plus 15. Oh, yeah. That's, I have to do that. I have to do that. And we'll choose one more focus and we'll, then we'll end the episode there. Good. Just give me as much army XP. I need more dynamite on everything. Good. Not bad. Oh, woodworking. Good. Let us grab resources. Um, I'll go with scavenge tools. That sounds like a good thing to do. Sources of water. I'm going to buy a few slaves with my money. And we shall the, do the God of Salt. I don't want to piss off New Canaan too quickly. So, the Gods of the Lake, which grants New Canaan an attack bonus against country. Skyfather looks pretty good. We get more attack. I like that. Let's do this God of Salt. To survive in the endless winter and under the scorching sun, our people have treasured salt. More than guns, opium, or gold, it is the currency of our people, and the salt is a sign of his favor. 
But anyways, guys, that is all the time that we have for today. If you like this episode, maybe consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and tomorrow I will try to go to war with the Grabber territory, even though they have more divisions than us, and they are very doped raiders, even though they don't really believe, well, they do believe in chemicals, but regardless, anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you all tomorrow.